we see India as a country that's going to dominate uh, AR exports because of the volume that you generate, I guess, virtually. When you look at India itself, you know, you have so many local airlines within India, okay? And then, and even with that, there's still not enough capacity. So that gives you everybody the indication that need more capacity than what you're able to offer today, okay? So from a Canadian perspective, we see opportunity saying, hey, okay, you know, how do we make that, take advantage and participate in this growth that this country is seeing? This is going to continue. Now, we're already forecasting a 30% increase in volume. That is significant because when you look at the flip side of it, we're saying, you know, we are in a period where our business is slow, uh, airlines are having lots of capacity, and here you're just having the opposite. Hi, everybody. This is uh, Libin Chako Korean from Stat Media Group. We are here in Mumbai for Air Cargo India 2024. Uh, I'm joined by Joe Lawrence, President of Airline uh, Services International, ASI. Uh, it's uh, Cargo uh, GSA with the global footprint with uh, representing a dozen airlines, including UPS, Ethiopian, uh, Avianca, and Qantas, for example. Joe Lawrence, thank you so much for joining us today. Certainly appreciate the opportunity to speak with uh, you and to speak with Stead Times. Yeah. Thank you. You have clients as airlines. You also work with a number of freight forwarders, for example, in Canada and North America. Uh, can you give us an idea about uh, how you feel like building a GSA business, dealing with both these airlines and freight forwarders, and for the last 35 years, and uh, nurturing, for example, how it feels like? Airline services, you know, as you just said, have been in the business for the last 35 years. With 35 years, you end up having a lot of experience behind you in terms of knowing what the... Um, industry is looking for, what the market is looking for, and what our customers are looking for. So with that type of experience, we've been able to grow our business and expand into new markets as well, understanding what our customers are looking for and being able to provide that service aspect. Okay, But keeping in mind that this industry is evolving, it's changing, uh, there's always something new uh, happening uh, uh, we talk about geopolitics, we talk about, you know, um, right now some of the challenges that are going through on a global basis. All of that has impacts on everybody, including our business. And so from our standpoint is saying, you know, how do we react? How do we find opportunities within these restrictions? So, and being an, a small independent organization, it gives us that ability to be flexible and to be able to move at short notice. Headquartered in Canada, uh, but you have a global reach. You are serving in the Indian market for the last 15 years, I could see. Can you give us an idea about what is happening in the Indian market right now? So part of the reason why ASI looked at India is that look at it from our perspective as a Canadian company. Our export market is not as strong as India, for example. And so when we look at with the airlines that we work with and we see the volume of cargo that's coming in from Asia, for example, and we said, okay, you know, it's something that we also need to take a look at and say, you know, rather than just be the receiver, why don't we participate in, in the export side of it? So that's part of the reason why we chose India as our first market to uh, start our operation. So it's been a good experience. It's been a good uh, market to be in. When we first started, you know, the yields were not the greatest, but the volumes were there to uh, substantiate and to provide the incentive to stay and remain in the Indian market. And now I think it's becoming even stronger than what it was before. We're seeing a lot more opportunities in, in this market. Yeah, we are here in Air Cargo India 2024. There is a lot of positive vibe about the Indian market going forward, for example. Uh, you also spoke about some of them, but there are also challenges, for example. What are some of the challenges that the Indian air cargo industry should be you know, so, are trying to solve? So from a GSA perspective, if you are not representing an airline that operates directly into India, that in itself is a challenge because now you're depending on somebody else to move that cargo into a market where you probably have an airline that you're working with, okay? And I'm sure you know, you understand in our business, we have two types of airlines that we work with, one which is an online and one which is an offline carrier, okay? So in India, if you're an offline carrier, then you're dependent solely on your interline partners to gain capacity. And that can be a challenge in a market where your volumes are so strong, the airlines that do operate directly out of India obviously are going to take preference for their cargo before they give any option. So as a GSA, you're always looking for new opportunities to find that capacity from India 
to a midpoint where you can then connect with an airline that you're working with. So that's been a challenge. Okay. Uh, talking about the Indian market, right now I was talking to some of the fleet forwarders and airports and airlines. What we could see right now is that there is an increase in the cargo movement because of uh, particularly the Red Sea issue. I could see there are uh, more cargo coming into the Mumbai, Delhi and Bangalore airports. Even there is a 48 hours embargo happened at the Dinata terminal in Dubai, for example. So are you witnessing any such of increase in cargo and what is happening in that market? We're definitely seeing yes. an increase of, or a surge for demand from the Indian market. Okay. But the challenge that we are still facing today is the capacity limitations. Okay? From a Canadian perspective, we don't have those challenges because we've got more capacity than cargo. And here in India, it's the reverse, we have more cargo than available capacity. Okay? And part of the issue is that to operate an aircraft is not a challenge. So tomorrow, we said, okay, you know, we can operate an aircraft. At the end of the day, though, that aircraft operation has to be economical because it's not just based on one way, it's on based on two way. So filling an aircraft out of India into Europe or into North America is not an issue. We can fill that aircraft. But the challenge is how do we bring that aircraft back into India and to be able to generate the type of revenue that you need in order to sustain the operation. And that's the biggest challenge, not just me or not just airline services, but all of the uh, competitors, are other airlines are all facing the same challenges. They're saying, yeah, we can put an aircraft, but can we make it a viable operation that can generate the, the revenue that we need to keep that aircraft in operation? And that's the, the quagmire that we have. Okay, I could see from your words that you're talking uh, solely from a perspective of an airline, for example, because they are your clients. That's how you think, for example. But can you also give a perspective about the shippers, for example, you talk to, for example, them? So the shippers are, you know, when they come to you, they're looking for you to be able to provide a certain level of service. And depending on the type of commodity, you know, if you're moving time-sensitive pharmaceutical, you don't have a lot of time to play with, okay? Now... If you are an offline operator, that poses some challenges because now you're dependent on a third party to give you capacity. Okay? That also has a further impact on price because now I'm going to have to pay the price that you demand in order to get the capacity that I need. So the question then becomes, is the end customer prepared to pay at the increasing cost? To move that cargo. So that's a challenge. How uh, fierce is that kind of conversation with the shippers right now in terms of you know the prices right now because they are always looking for a cheaper price and you are trying to create uh, revenue on the other side. What's happening now is almost similar to during COVID given the, the lack of passenger movement airlines in order to remain in business they had to move aircraft just to move cargo. Okay you were able to do that because your yields were much higher okay because supply and demand there was no uh, aircraft available. So if you wanted to move your cargo, you had to pay the price. And we're seeing a little bit of it right now in that sense, where we are seeing rates going up, primarily because of what's happening, as you just mentioned, in the Red Sea, etc. Some of the ocean restrictions of not being able to move uh, cargo in a timely manner. Customers are being forced to pay some of the increases in rates in order to move their shipments. So that makes it a little bit more easy because now... Because, you know, at the end of the day, if you're willing to pay the price, you can find the service and you can meet that demand. So that's something that I think we're all dealing with now. And we see that continuing for as long as the problems remain in the Red Sea. So, you know, there's no timeline that says, you know, it's going to end tomorrow or the day after. So that's going to keep us, I guess, keep the rates high. And it's also going to create a demand for capacity. Let's talk about your yeah, business a bit more. Uh, SI, the company that you have been you know, uh, nurturing for the last 35 years. Recently, you made some expansion and you have some plans for expansions as well. Like you uh, have expanded your global footprint uh, recently working with Salamir, I think, and supporting their UAE operation uh, with the first flights to Dubai just before Christmas. And uh, you are now looking to Hong Kong, China and Latin America, I could see. Tell us about these markets. You know, what are the kind of demands that you are witnessing there? And what are your plans? As I said earlier, coming from a country that has more imports than exports, so we are basically looking at the, the trend in terms of, you know, where is this cargo coming into Canada from, for example, okay? And picking the markets that we feel provides the best opportunities for us to expand our footprint, okay? 
And so, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, we first started with, with India, and now we see uh, Dubai is a market that we've gone into, okay? And we hope to do the same thing in markets like Hong Kong and China, so that we can leverage some of our expertise, we can leverage some of our, uh, our network and our connections in order to get those markets operational as, as well, okay? So, unfortunately, you know, we keep saying, you know, we'd like to do it sooner than later, but getting it up and running sometimes takes, there is more time required in order to get, to get started. Yes. Okay, good luck with your uh, expansion plans. Can you also give us an idea about in terms of verticals, uh, not just markets, what are the kind of commodities? Is that e-commerce that you're looking into? Or uh, what are the verticals or what are the industries that you're looking into cater to when uh, you're talking about expansions? If I was to, I guess, look at it from a Canadian perspective, we have basically diversified to some degree, okay? And where we provide not just the, the services that we provide the airlines as a GSA. Uh, we also do last mile, for example, from India. You know, they want to move cargo to USA and Canada, but they want the cargo delivered to the end user. Okay. Yes. So, so we provide that type of service. And then one of the other products that we've gone into is time critical. So you have an aircraft on ground. Somebody needs to move apart from A to B. It has to be picked up from the manufacturer and delivered to the airline or delivered to the airport that the aircraft is grounded, okay? Which means that, you know, somebody physically picking up that piece, flying with it on the aircraft and delivering it to the end user, okay? We've been doing that for the last two years and we are starting to see that pick up steam, pick up more customers as they find new opportunities. We see that as a market that's also expanding. So one of the USP I could see about ASI is the customer care, right? Uh, as you talk about, uh, particularly the flexibility and agility that you offer to your customers, for example. You even uh, mentioned about the time-critical product that you uh, launched, which is 24-7, for example. Tell us about the importance of listening to your customers and how these approaches are paying off. When you're a, a small player, I guess, competing with the multinationals and the larger, because our competitors are airlines as well as other GSAs. So how do you stand out and how do you gain the, the confidence of the customer? And that comes down to what can we do better than what the other person is doing, okay? So we go the extra step of basically not just taking your cargo, but making certain that the cargo is also moving within the timelines that we told you that it was going to move. And so our objective is to keep the customer informed from the time we take that cargo till it gets to the destination, we inform the customer. Now, everybody today talks about, you know, uh, digitalization and, you know, how good we are and, you know, what we're doing. But all of those changes and infrastructure improvements is only as good as the people behind it. So you have airlines today that say, well, you know, you know, we've got this and we've got that. And, you know, um, all you have to do is, you know, go log on to your computer and we, and you'll, you'll find where your shipment is. But that information is only as reliable as the person at the other end that's inputting that information back into the system. And no matter how good we all say we are, there's information that is missing. And what we want to make certain is that I want our shipper to know before the consignee at the other end notifies the customer, say, hey, where's my cargo? So I'd rather tell the shipper, hey, we got a problem. Your shipment didn't arrive before his client calls him and tells him that. So that's how we differentiate our services. Interesting observations, interesting things happening in a company. Can you give an idea about what is the future of ASI that you're looking into as an independent company? So as an independent company, we're looking at partnering with other organizations similar to ours in order to grow in new markets because we see that as a way of expanding our footprint, not necessarily by opening up your own offices, but by working with local institutions that know the market, that have a customer base that can support their services, et cetera. So it makes it easier for us to come into a new market and you know partner with somebody and then uh, get our business up and running. Because at the end of the day, our objective is to, when we take on a responsibility of representing an airline, our objective is to maximize the capacity utilization and the revenue for that airline. So no matter what market we look at, that's our objective, is saying, you know, can we fulfill what we do and providing the services that carrier requires in order to justify the operation. We are here in Air Cargo India 2024. You are serving this market as well. Big ambitions to grow, for example. What is your message for the fraternity in uh, the Indian Air Cargo industry? We see 
India as a country that's going to dominate uh, AR exports because of the volume that you generate, I guess, virtually. When you look at India itself, you know, you have so many local airlines within India, okay? And then, and even with that, there's still not enough capacity. So that gives you everybody the indication that need more capacity than what you're able to offer today, okay? So from a Canadian perspective, we see opportunity saying, hey, okay, you know, how do we make that, take advantage and participate in this growth that this country is seeing? This is going to continue. Now, we're already forecasting a 30% increase in volume. That is significant because when you look at the flip side of it, we're saying, you know, we are in a period where our business is slow, uh, airlines are having lots of capacity, and here you're just having the opposite. Joe, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.